Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to examine the fundamental theorem of calculus. This theorem enables us to connect the differentiation and integration, and also it helps us to evaluate definite integrals. So what does the fundamental theorem of calculus is? Well, it combines of two parts. The first part says that if f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, then the capital F of x, which is defined as from a to x integral f of t dt, is also continuous on the closed interval a, b, and is differentiable on the open interval a, b, and the derivative of capital F of x with respect to x, which is the derivative of this integral with respect to x, is equal to f of x. The second part of the theorem says that if f is continuous at every point in the closed interval a, b, and if capital F is any antiderivative of F on this interval, then the integral A to B, F of x dx, is equal to the value of capital F at B minus the value of F at A. Now, let me emphasize the importance of this theorem. As you can see from this formula that to evaluate a definite integral, we don't anymore need Riemann sums. If we only know an antiderivative of the integrand function, then we can evaluate the integrand function at the integration limits and take the difference and evaluate the definite integral in a much quicker and easy, easier way. To have a better understanding of the theorem, let's work with several examples. The first example says that y is equal to the integral from 2 to x t cubed dt, and they ask you to calculate the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, this is an integrable function, so I can integrate it, but instead I'm going to use fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, I will take the derivative of y with respect to x, which means the derivative with respect to x, t cubed dt. Now, if you look at the formula here, actually it is equal to the value of the integral function at x. So here we go, here a is 2, a constant. Your integral function f of t is t cubed. We already know that this is equal to f of x. Well, if f of t is t cubed, then f of x is equal to x cubed. So, the derivative of y with respect to x is x cubed. Let's look at the second example. Now here y is given to you as the integral from sine x to cosine x t dt, and again they ask you the derivative of y with respect to x. Now if the integration limits are functions of x, then it is much better to use Leibniz's rule. So what is Leibniz's rule? The Leibniz's rule says if f is continuous on the closed interval, and if u of x and v of x are differentiable functions of x, whose values lie in the interval a, b, then the derivative with respect to x of the integral u of x to v of x, f of t dt, is equal to the value of f at the upper limit times upper limit's derivative minus the value of f at the lower limit times lower limit's derivative. Now let's go back to this example again. As you see, when you're taking the derivative of y with respect to x, you see that the integration limits are functions of x. So that's why I'm going to use Leibniz's rule. Here you go, this is your f of t, the integrand function. I know that by Leibniz's rule, this is equal to the value of f at the upper limit times the derivative of the upper limit minus the value of f at the lower limit times the lower limit's derivative. So, now look, if f of t is t, then f of cosine x is equal to cosine x. The derivative of cosine x with respect to x is minus sine x minus f of sine x is equal to sine x. The derivative of sine x with respect to x is equal to cosine x. Now what you will get is minus 2 times sine x times cosine x, which we already know that this is equal to 
minus sine 2 times x. Now, to understand it better, I want to give this example to the third example. As you see, the first part of the question is like 2, but there is an additional term here. And they ask you the derivative of a sum. Now, please look at the second integral. As you see, the integration limits are constants. That's why the value of this integral will be a constant. And when you take the derivative of that integral with respect to x, the result will be 0. So the derivative will only be equal to the derivative of this integral from sine x to cosine x t dt. We already calculated that, which is equal to minus sine 2 times x. Now, let's have a different example now. They give an equation to us from integral from 0 to x f of t dt is equal to 1 plus tangent x, and they ask you the value of f at pi over 4. Now, as you can see, we don't know the integrand function here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus and take the derivative of this equation with respect to x. For the left-hand side term, I will use the Leibniz's uh, rule or fundamental theorem of calculus. The value of f at the upper limit, which is x, times upper limit's derivative, minus the value of f at the lower limit times lower limit's derivative, which is equal to the derivative of 1 is 0, since it is constant. The derivative of tangent x is second square x. Now, as you see, the derivative of 0 is 0. And the derivative of 1 is, the derivative of x is 1. And that's why you will get that f of x is equal to second square x. They ask you the value of f at pi over 4, which is equal to second square pi over 4, which is 2. Now, let's look at these last two examples. These are more difficult than the others. For this one, and they give us that for every x, the integral 4 to x, f of t dt is equal to f square x, and they ask us to find the function f of x. Now, as you can see, we don't know the integrand function, so this is quite difficult than the rest. Now, let's take the derivative of this equation. Now, for the left-hand side of the equation, we apply a fundamental theorem of calculus, so that is equal to value of f at the upper limit, which is x, times upper limit's derivative, which is 1, minus the value of f at the lower limit, which is f of 4, times the derivative of 4, which is 0, is equal to. Now, the right-hand side, you need to be careful. To be able to take the derivative of this function, you need to apply the chain rule. So the power comes in front, the power becomes 1 less times the derivative of inside function. Here we go. So as you see, since this part is 0, you have common factor of f of x. So I can write it as f of x times 1 minus 2 times f prime of x is equal to 0. So either this one is 0 or this one is 0. But they give us in the question that f of x is different than 0, which means this one must be 0. So that will give us that f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2, which means if you integrate it, f of x is equal to 1 over 2 times x plus an integration con constant. Now, we can also calculate the integration constant. Now, let's look at it here. 
in this equation, choose x to be equal to 4. Then what happens that you will have the integral 4 to 4 f of t dt is equal to f squared of 4. Now, if the integration limits, the lower and upper limit, are exactly the same, it means that this integral is equal to 0, which means f of 4 is also 0. Now, let's come back here. Now, since I already know the value of f of 4, I replace 4 in this formula. You will get 1 over 2 times 4 plus c. Well, we already find that f of 4 is 0, so that must be 0, which means c turns out to be minus 2. Then your f is 1 over 2 times x minus 2. That's the answer of the question. And for the last one, <clears throat> You need to think a little bit more. Here they give a continuous function, and they give you how they define f. They give you the value of f at the point 1, and they ask you the derivative of f at the point 1. Now, again, uh, we will apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, but this time you need to be really careful so that you're not uh, only going to take the derivative of a sum, but also the derivative of a multiplication. So when you take the derivative of this equation, you will get d dx x times 0 to x f of t dt plus x squared, which is equal to, now this is a multiplication, the derivative of the first one is 1 times the second one plus first one times the derivative of the second term plus the derivative of x squared, which is 2 times x. And for this one, from the fundamental of uh, theorem of calculus, I already know that this is equal to f of x times x's derivative, which is 1 minus 0. You will get nothing from there. Now, <clears throat> what we get from here that the derivative of f is equal to integral from 0 to x f of t dt plus x times f of x plus 2 times x. Now, they ask us the value of f prime at the point 1. So I write here f prime of 1 is equal to from 0 to 1 f of t dt plus 1 times f of 1 plus 2. Right. Now, this is the thing I need to calculate. That's why in this equation, I write instead of x1, and I will get the integral 0 to 1, f of t dt, plus 1. Now, in the question, they give us the value of f at the point 1, which is 3. So that actually equals to 3, which means this integral is equal to 2. So here, if I write what I find, 2 plus f of 1, which is given as 3, plus 2, the result will be 7. In this video, we learned about fundamental theorem of calculus. Hope to see you in the next video.